uh, this topic uh, taken from economic survey chapter 2 fiscal developments okay so it comes under public finance it comes under public finance and there's a chance that you may get a question from this particular topic okay there are many reasons for it after uh, discussing the topic you'll understand that why it is so important okay and you know that the year 2020 the most important current affair is related with covid only okay but we are discussing how this covid had impacted our economy how it has affected our fiscal balance or it has created a big fiscal imbalance in the form of higher fiscal deficit all these things we have discussed okay and in our earlier class i have discussed while discussing fiscal stimulus the government have come up with a massive fiscal the government have come up with a massive fiscal stimulus so fiscal stimulus is one of the important topic okay another important topic is that in the economic survey explicitly saying that okay government have taken four important measures to support the states during this uh, lockdown period lockdown and after that okay so still we are living in a situation where this uh, COVID-19 COVID pandemic impact is still there okay but it is gradually improving the situation is gradually improving okay so the you need to before going into the topic you need to understand that after the uh, lockdown and the related restrictions the central government imposed central government and the other government imposed uh, on the movement of the people as well as uh, the restriction on economic activity from the economic point of view what has impacted is that there have been a huge revenue shortfall okay both for the sender as well as the states so in this topic okay so we have seen that how sender is managing with this uh, huge shortfall in its revenue okay so regarding the states regarding the states okay try to, we have discussed in our earlier classes that okay uh, the state the major state revenue used to be sales tax but later it became vat state vat sales tax became state vat okay and what happened is that state vat was subsumed with gst okay so now the state's major revenue is depend on gst so there have been shortfall in gst collection there have been shortfall in gst collection there have been shortfall in other revenue of the states okay so in order to address this problem shortfall in revenue so like in the case of uh, sender there have been rising fiscal as well as revenue deficit for all the states so in order to deal with the situation so one is shortfall in gst collection then rising revenue deficit and the fiscal deficit and state is having more responsibility in order to deal with this covid 19 pandemic center have decided to provide support to the state in various forms okay economic survey is talking about four measures so there is a chance that one of these measures one of these measures can be a potential question for you okay so we'll deal with say this is i have taken uh, from the economic survey okay so the first measure see try to understand all one common thing about all these four measures is that it is central assistance to states okay it's clear that okay enhanced limit of borrowing see this support is for the financial year 2020 21 remember 2020 21 is not over okay so during this and you know that in march once see the lockdown was announced in march 23 okay and then within a few days that financial year got over so the the new financial year starts with this restrictions only okay so the enhanced limit of borrowing for the financial year 2021 under atma nirbar bharat package so under the fiscal stimulus we have discussed what is the atma nirbar package it's basically a fiscal stimulus package to boost the economic activity okay now in order to understand this topic it's a current affair so you you have to understand frbm we have discussed frbm okay so frbm act like in the case of sender okay frbm act have put a borrowing restrictions 
on the part of the state. So this is one important, since this is a current affair, you need to know that under the FRBM Act, the state can't borrow beyond 3% of state GDP. We call it as gross state domestic product. It is the GDP of that particular state. So this is the, under the, we have seen that the fiscal deficit 3% of the GDP. That is the borrowing limit. Okay, so each state, how much they can borrow under the FRBM Act? 3% of their state GDP. They cannot borrow beyond that. That was the situation before this lockdown. But after the lockdown was announced, for the financial, see, this is, this, this measure is only for one financial year. After this financial year get over, this center may provide some other support. We have to see it, okay. So this measure was announced for the financial year 2021 and some flexibility have been given. We'll, everything we'll discuss, okay. So, for this particular financial year, so along, see, this is the existing borrowing limit. Economic survey is not talking about it. What is the existing, so, but as a student of economy, and since you have studied with the FRBM Act, you have to connect it. Because, so, economic survey is talking about additional borrowing. So, what is the borrowing limit? Borrowing limit is 3% of state GDP. So, survey says that, that each state, other than the normal borrowing limit of 3% of GDP, they can additionally borrow additionally 2% of their state GDP. So, 3% is their existing borrowing limit. <coughs> then, to that, they can borrow additionally 2%, but with certain restrictions. So, that is discussed about, okay. So, this 2% of GDP will come around by if you take all the states, it will come around 4.27 lakh crore. So by giving, so the state can borrow additionally 4.27 lakh crore. That fact is not important. Just since it is covered in the economic survey, I'm discussing it. Okay. So <clears throat> and so we'll see that how this two percentage of gross state domestic product will be released by the sender to the state. So it is saying that out of this 2 percentage, okay, the first, so this 2 percentage is cut into different part, okay, out of this 2 percentage of, this is additional borrowing, the first 0.5 percentage of the state GDP is untied, this word is very important, okay, it's actually tied, untied, tied means it is coming with certain conditions, the loan, see normally when any agency give loan, they will come with some conditions, when IMF give loan to our government, they give some condition, okay. So, they are tied loans. Loans tied to certain, I mean, some, some conditions, okay. If you follow that condition only, then loan will be given. Untied means without any conditions, it has been given. So, the 0.5 percentage of the borrowing of the state GDP is untied. That's the first point they are discussing. First installment of 0.5 percentage of the borrowing is untied for all the states. Now the second part is, the second is the next one percentage. This is tied loan. This is coming with conditions. To get this one percentage of this borrowing or if the state want to borrow one percentage of the state GDP, then they have to implement four specific state level reforms. Four state specific reforms. So, if any particular state implement those, this can be a potential question. Okay, what are the four reforms to get this enhanced borrowing? And each ref, each four reforms is getting equal weightage. So, this one percentage is divided into four. That is 0.25 percentage. So, four, the four reforms are implementation of one nation, one ration card scheme. So, if any state is implementing one nation, one uh, ration card scheme, it's a current affair, we'll discuss deal, uh, separately. They can borrow point. If the state is have not implemented, they cannot borrow. Second, any state which started implementing this ease of doing business reforms, which been given by the sender, if any state started improving the ease of doing this reforms, they will get another 0.25 percentage. The third one is mainly urban local body reforms. Including the utility reforms which have been suggested, different utility reforms been suggested. So third you can say that urban local body reforms. Fourth one is power sector reforms, especially in the 
power distribution companies reforms to deal with their debt. So these four points you know down. So this is the so this second one percentage of state GDP is depending upon certain reforms taken up by the state and each four reforms is given equal weightage in terms of borrowing. The final installment. So what will be the final remaining? Third installment will be the remaining 0.5 percentage. Then if you add, you will get 2 percentage. It is saying that final 0.5 percentage borrowing was conditional, again conditional, on undertaking at least 3 out of the 4 reforms. If you want to get the last 0.5 percentage, your state have to implement at least 3 reforms. But this third condition have been waived. We will discuss in the second. So this is the first part. Okay. See, as time improved, the central government have become flexible. Okay. Now itself I am telling. This is the conditions. So the first installment is untied. Second installment is tied, which based on condition. Third, it is again tied, but later on it changed. So we don't know how UPSC will ask question. That depending upon that. If the UPSC is taking questions from this section, they will copy from this statement only. Okay. But I am since I am, will be discussing in the second measure. See, I told you four measures have been taken. This is the first measure. That is enhanced borrowing limit of 2% of state GDP. What I am trying to say is, this is again a current affair in the next topic. Under the GNS, GST compensation shortfall, they have done something. <coughs> so, without understanding this... <coughs> Uh, how the sender is uh, allowed the state to borrow this additional 2 percentage of borrowing is depending upon certain conditions but the first condition is there is no con in the first 0.5 percentage no condition second 1 percentage there are 4 conditions are there last one they said that at least 3 have to be implemented but that later on it was changed to address the GN's GST compensation understand that <coughs> The state, see under the FRBM Act, there is a restriction on the part of the state they can borrow. How much they can borrow? Understanding? For a particular year, they can borrow up to 3% of the state GDP. It means that their fiscal deficit should not go beyond 3%. But due to lockdown and related poor revenue for the state, it have been liberalized that from 3 percentage they can borrow up to 5 percentage. But this additional 2 percentage of the borrowing the state can which the state can do is depending upon these conditions.